continuous a continuous random variable is that one that can take up any real number, right? So it doesn't have to be an integer or a natural number, right? A continuous random variable has some of these properties. So it needs to be greater than zero for all of x. So keep in mind, I'm now using a function. It's a bit strange, right? But we'll sort of see why a function makes more sense than what we saw earlier. So the probability must be, what this simply says is that the probability must be greater than zero for all x possibilities, right? Which is just stock standard for probability. Um, the area enclosed by the graph and the x-axis must be equal to 1, right? So that's taking an integral from, um, from a to b of f of x minus 0 d of x must be equal to 1. It's more accurate, actually, to write infinity in both of these, so negative infinity to infinity. So for the full length of that function, the area enclosed must be equal to 1. Okay, um, and so you know that's sort of represented here. If I, but if I want to work out um, between two particular areas, um, I need to work out the integral, right? Um, so the probability of x is less than less than a is also equal to the probability of x is greater than or equal to a. Oh wait, less than or equal to a. Sorry. Um, so here are a couple different variables. Um, that are um, going to be under a continuous probability, oh, sorry, that two of them are under a continuous probability like you guys just saw, and one of them isn't. And I'm gonna sort of explain why. Well, obviously with postcodes, you can't have, you know, like decimal, you generally don't have decimal points with postcodes, right? You'd hope. Um, whereas with Metro, like, you know, time that things can run late by or height, like I mentioned earlier, that's gonna be on a spectrum, right? It's gonna be on some, you know, continuous scale. So hence, those two are continuous, whereas postcodes is not. So we generally represent um, continuous probability by what's known as a probability density function, or a PDF, right? So when we talk about continuous variables, we refer to them over an interval rather than a particular case, right? So we ask, you know, what's the probability that someone is between 163 and 178? Right, because that includes these point heights, like you know, 0 0.9, 0 0.2, right? So if we want to find 163 to 178, we want to take the integral from 163 to 178, right? Of f of x with respect to dx, right? As shown in the slide earlier. Oh, sorry, I should go back. Um so yeah, when we're, when we're doing those calculations, um, 163, 178, those are gonna be our determinants, right? Um, another thing to note is that you can't find, for a continuous probability function, you can't find a particular case. Um, I'll give you guys maybe a, a second to think about that. Why could that be true? Type your answer in chat. Why can, you know, why would this be equal to zero? Because Because it is, okay? One possible sort of explanation is that if I want to work this out for a probability um, density function, right, when that when it's a continuous function, what I'm doing is I'm taking an integral from 163 to 163 in both cases of f of x dx, which is just capital F of 163 minus f of 163, right, which is just equal to zero. Now let's, you know, mathematically that's sound, right? But let's sort of think about it in a realistic sense, right? And um, I want you guys to type, you know, the, your thoughts on that into chat rather than just, you know, um, the, 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 the thoughts about, you know, why it's mathematically zero, right? So let's think about, you know, like a, like a group or like a sample of, you know, like a hundred people. Or let's just think about the Australian population in general, right? What's the probability that Let's say you put all of every Australian like person on, on Australia, let's say you put them in a bag, right? Like you, let's say you just have an infinitely large bag, you can put them into a bag, and then you reach your hand in, you grab one of them, and you pull them out. What's the probability that they're exactly equal to 163 centimeters? Like, what's the probability that their height is exactly 163 centimeters, right? Super low, impossible, right? In that scale, maybe there's like one, maybe there's one person who's exactly 163 centimeters, but it's out of millions, right? Like, like too many, right? It's 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 just a it's you know that's just approximately zero. 
Right. So in both, like, you know, mathematically, using the sort of calculations we've been taught, and, you know, using sort of sets and logic, we can sort of see why, you know, with continuous probability, it's really hard to find a particular value that's not equal to zero. So your probability, you know, continuous probability questions are always going to be like, you know, what's the probability this guy's or, you know, the, this population's height is between these two values. What's the probability that, you know, this ball has a speed between these two values or less than this or greater than this, right? If they ask you a question like, what's the probability of X is less than 100 and like less than 100, um, you would do an integral from, you know, an upper bound of 100 to from negative infinity to an upper bound of 100, right? Why is it okay to use negative infinity? Sorry, that's not a negative 8. Infinity. Why is it okay to use a negative infinity? Because it's likely your probability density function tapers out at the bottom. Maybe it looks a bit like this, right? So from here, you know, which is like about 100, let's say that's 100. And, you know, this just keeps going on and on and it gets, keeps getting closer to zero, right? Once it's past x is equal to zero, um, you know, the, the y-axis, it's hit zero, right? Um, but yeah, so if you're doing from negative infinity to 100, you're really only capturing this region, right? Which is fine. Which, which is like perfectly fine. Um, so when you're doing less than, I'd recommend using negative infinity. If you're doing probability of x is greater than 100, I'd recommend using, you know, your upper bound um, as infinity and, oh, my infinity symbols are not it today, and 100, right? So f of x dx, so 100 to infinity, because that's, you know, 100 is your lower bound, okay? Um, hopefully that makes some sense.